Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted. This is episode 184, and you're sitting down on a nice sunny day. I hope it's sunny where you are. It's sunny where we are, watching two guys talk about news. How sad is that? I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm George Conger. Today's June 10th, 2015. Okay, George and I are back on screen. Um, we've had some tef- tef- technical dif- I'm sorry, we can't even talk. We're having such technical difficulties. Uh, George and I have had some technical di- difficulties with his stream from Florida. Um, through his internet cable company, every once in a while his Skype will cut out. And that's really led to... Uh, we, don't, we have a whole lot of half shows that you guys probably will never see. Um, and today the cable guy is going to come and going to replace his modem and router and try and figure it all out. But we wanted to get this episode out before the guy arrives uh, because it's important news. Uh, and, it's, and I got a service in a half hour. <laughs> yeah, and George has a 10 o'clock service. So we're going to rush it out. Um, we talk uh, frequently about Catherine Jeffords Shorey uh, and some of the sermons she puts out over time. She has that famous Paul service where she defends the demon girl, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Well, she recently said, listen, I'm looking here at the church calendar, and it's Uganda Martyrs Sunday. I need to say something. And so she gave a nice sermon uh, uh, to some people. It was in North Carolina. Yeah, it was uh, June 3rd yeah. at the Canuga Conference Center in North Carolina, sure. the Province Force Pre-General Convention Synod meeting. Okay, and she says it's a great time to, to really talk about the Uganda martyrs, talk about living martyrs, talk about why Ugandans really don't like the Episcopal Church. And she encapsulated that all in one sermon, George. Well, Kevin, who are the Uganda martyrs? Well, the Uganda martyrs were uh, gentlemen who were Ugandan who converted to Christianity. I think uh, some 20 were Anglican, another 20 uh, were Roman Catholic. 23 and, Anglicans, 22 Catholics. We and, had one more. Okay, <laughs> one more. Yay! And so uh, they uh, worked for the king, and they were part of his court. They were actually called pages at the time. And uh, we don't treat them like we pages in our government. But... Uh, um, <laughs> yes, we do. If you read some of the stuff coming out of Washington. <laughs> and so they were pages of the king. And uh, the king, uh, in order to assert power, uh, he wasn't searching for his father, uh, or other relationships, but he uh, would engage in homosexual uh, sex with uh, pages and other people to prove that he was their king. And um, and uh, I think a lust also had something to do with lust, this well. you know. And so uh, when they became Christian, they said, ah, 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 "No, no more." The Bible says sex is between uh, myself and another person of the opposite sex with whom I'm married to. Um, and, and, and Paul, Paul says something about uh, fornicators, uh, people yeah. who commit sexual pornea, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Yes. And they, those poor ignorant savages in 1887 took this Bible stuff seriously. Yes. And so you, the reality is the king said, well, if you're not going to let me do what I like to do, um, I'm going to have you castrated, burned, and killed. And that created the Uganda martyrs. It happened over two years. Um, and the Ugandans, uh, every year on the anniversary, because Christianity has really overtaken Uganda, celebrate this anniversary because these people brought Christianity to Uganda. Uh, they, it exploded. They, uh, they made Christianity. They, Christianity had been brought by the missionaries, mm-hmm. but the Uganda martyrs internalized Christianity. Mm-hmm. It made it a religion of the people. And it, June 3rd is a national holiday in Uganda, and about two million people are said to have attended or made the pilgrimage to Namagumbo uh, at, to visit the Catholic and Anglican shrines where these uh, martyrs are commemorated. 1964, I think it was Pope Paul, uh, cons- uh, canonized the uh, 22 Catholics as saints of the church. Mm-hmm. This is a big deal in the Ugandans' cultural, emotional, national life. Yeah. The pre- everybody, the president, the, everybody goes to these things because uh, 
imagine wrapping together Easter and Christmas and the Fourth of July and Thanksgiving into one holiday. Yes. And you've got the Uganda Martyrs Day in Uganda. So and can, it's yes. in our church calendar. It's in later. our church calendar, which is why Catherine Jefford Shorey wrote her sermon. Now, Catherine Jefford Shorey had clearly an agenda in this, and that is to show that um, in the end, we all agree that there's nothing wrong with homosexuality. And uh, to get there, she had to uh, identify uh, what martyrs were. She introduced us to something new called living martyrs, which is ironic in my world because she has created 770 living martyrs of her own. And so uh, I'm reading through the sermon that George posted on anything. I said, oh, we got to talk about this, George. Well, the first three quarters, I disagree with profoundly. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's my opinion versus her interpretation. She begins off by talking about martyrs like Martin Luther King mm -hmm. and Jonathan Daniels, the Episcopal Seminarian murdered in the Civil Rights Movement. And, you know, and, but then she sort of expands the definition of martyrs and basically choosing more and more and more anodyne individuals till finally she gets to Chip Marble and Duncan Gray, two former bishops of Mississippi, who for their, for their pro-gay stand, in my opinion, have been mildly inconvenienced. So we've gone from martyrs like Martin Luther King all the way down to bishops who are now unpopular because they caved in on the gay issue. So the definition of martyrs is expanded. She then defines the uh, Uganda martyrs movement and says, you know, this is all true and well and good, but we have to understand that psychologically speaking, this is why the Ugandans don't like the Episcopal Church. They've got, in essence, a psychic hang-up over this traumatic event in their national lives. And besides, you know, what King, the king was doing in 1887 is not the kind and loving relationship that we know the homosexuality to be today. Now, that's all opinion and analysis, and I basically think the woman's cuckoo when she says that. Well, you actually, I mean, all this is documented. There was, let's talk a little bit about the bishop. He showed a, um, what's his name again? Christopher Senyanjo. I'm really good at African names, and I apologize. Uh, he showed at the last, up at the last Lambeth um, when Uganda had uh, decided they're not going to go. He shows up as a bishop of Uganda. He was all over the ex exhibition hall. Uh, the Episcopal Church said, look, we have a, a, a Ugandan bishop who supports homosexuality. And he was starting to make up the, the uh, get higher and higher in the VIP chain until Henry Arambi got in contact with Rowan Williams and said, uh, this guy's been deposed. He went to trial. He did not go to trial because he opposed homosexuality. He went to trial because he uh, ordained somebody in the uh, a non-denominational charismatic yeah. church. You know, yeah. in her sermon, the presiding bishop said mm -hmm. that Christopher Sinyanjo uh, was deposed by the Ugandan Church for support of gays and lesbians mm -hmm. in Uganda. He does support gays and lesbians in Uganda, and he's flown all around the world by gay activists to be an African voice. He was not deposed for that. Mm. I covered that his trial in 2007. I wrote it up for the Church of England newspaper. I spoke to the provincial secretary. I did all the reporting and checking the facts. I even looked at the documents from the trial. Uh, Christopher Senyanjo, there was a former Anglican priest in Uganda who joined one of these charismatic uh, African independent churches, and he was going to be made a bishop. And Christopher Senyanjo consecrated him a bishop for this charismatic independent church. Mm -hmm. In essence, he passed on apostolic orders to this new denomination. And for that reason, and that reason alone, he was deposed. Now, this was shared with uh, the, you know, Rowan Williams and in 2008. Every time this issue comes up, the Ugandans put out, put out a press statement but the presiding bishop repeats this false story time and again that Christopher Sinyanjo is a modern Ugandan martyr, but this time he's a martyr for being pro-gay, not anti-gay like the fellows a hundred plus years ago. Yeah. And, you know, he may support the gay movement. I don't dispute that, but you cannot... It, it, 
it's it's like these guys who run for politics and then claim, oh, I won the Medal of Honor or something, or did you know did something when in reality they just cleaned latrines in Fort Dix, New Jersey. You know, it's a it's this false hero syndrome that we seem to thrive upon in our modern culture, and put forward these claims that have no basis in truth, but make us feel good. Well, it's also about redefinition. Um, the Episcopal Church is willing now at this next general convention to start to redefine marriage, to mm -hmm. redefine holy matrimony, uh, something that you know has been a constant in the church uh, for 2,000 years and constant in uh, Judeo-Christianity or J in, in the Jewish culture for uh, thousands of years before that. And it's time now in 2015 that we redefine it. She's also taking the opportunity to redefine what a martyr is. Um, and this is just this culture where um, if we don't like what we see, we can change it. Uh, Bill Clinton is very famous for saying, well, that depends what you say is, is, you know, and we, we uh, avoid the truth by trying to avoid the words and uh, the definitions those words provide. Um, We're not saying that Catherine Jeffrey Shorey is an evil, horrible person for believing what she does. We disagree with all of the arguments that she marshals mm -hmm. in support of her position, but she still, we're not saying that she's lying when she puts these ideas forward. What I am saying is that when she makes the example of Christopher Sinyanjo to support her whole thrust of her argument, she's actually undermining it because that is a demonstrably false statement. Mm -hmm. You don't need to add these uh, claims uh, to make your point. No. Her goal was to say that uh, in the end we all agree that homosexuality is fine. That was not achieved with her sermon. Uh, and uh, her goal was to say that the Ugandans uh, don't like the Episcopal Church's um, homosexuality because of a single king uh, creating martyrs uh, a couple hundred years ago. That's not and true. The shame of it is, though, Kevin, in our modern church and in our modern culture, uh, the presiding bishops' fans will hear what she says, and they will not hear any criticism whatsoever. Well, you tried to uh, point out their uh, falsehood on their on their uh, website. Well, the Episcopal News Service uh, encourages people to post comments to have conversation, and on the uh, website, I just posted a little note saying. Uh, the claim about Senyanjo is incorrect. Here's the Ugandan provincial secretary's statement. Here's the news article I wrote in 2007. Uh, you know, just approaching the Senyanjo issue, and th they spike that. No, no comments that make the the the, uh, the queen look bad. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about comments that make us look bad. It's a little transition. Um, Ten days ago, or maybe it's, it's two weeks ago now, uh, a person posted on a website some criticism of a show we did a long, long time ago. It was about a year and a half ago. Uh, George and I were talking about uh, coming back from GAFCON 2 and some of the elements of what happened there, some of the characters who showed up there, some of the characters and what they did there. And that show episode, I forget. And our, and our interpretation and of our, what it meant. And our interpretation of what this meant. Um, this poor gentleman, who I feel sorry for, watched that episode many, many times to find the inaccuracies he thought were in the article and the inaccuracies of our, our anal analysis. And he compared us to Jon Stewart's famous uh, truthliness um, uh, comments where you, when people talk about news and analysis, they don't always get the full story 100% correct. George and I are here to tell you that we desire the criticism. We are not above reproach. I'm not, <clears throat> that's for sure. Ask Mrs. Coulson. Um, we desire to be accurate. We desire to be truthful. Uh, we desire at the end of the, of the day that this show reflects not just you know a production value and entertainment value, but it glorifies uh, Christ and grows the kingdom. Uh, it, there's a, it's a multi-use show. So when we are wrong, we desire to correct it. Two weeks ago, I corrected a story on uh, Bishop Brewer. I said Bishop Brewer supported the lifestyle of the two homosexual men who wanted their child baptized. I was wrong. 
a wonderful viewer pointed out, Kevin, that's not exactly what this text says. You need to correct it. I came on the show. I corrected it. Um, George made a full paw back at, at uh, GAFCON 2 where he posted uh, a draft of the, of the uh, communique. And George, what did you do? I, I was not present when they say, don't share this. I just got the piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And since it didn't say embargoed, I went ahead and shared it as I would any other mm -hmm. document that came my way. Huh? Well, once I had a bunch of people get on the Internet and just scream and rant and yell and rave saying, take this down, you horrible human being. Well, you know, that really doesn't do much, if anything, for me. But when, when the GAFCON people said, oh, this, you've made a mistake, this was embargoed, and I said, oh, I didn't know, I took it down. Mm -hmm. In yeah. other words, there's no, uh, there's no percentage in sort of persisting in falsehoods, it, persisting it, in mistakes. Right, and we're not holding our, we're not saying we're perfect. Um, our commentary is perfect, obviously, but, and our news but analysis see, is Kevin, perfect. This yeah. is the difference between <laughs> commentary yeah. and news. Sure. Now, in this issue, I wrote on this issue that we covered in that Anglican unscripted episode mm -hmm. that's under discussion. I wrote news stories for the Church of England newspaper, the Church Times, Anglican Inc., and I was on the BBC mm -hmm. uh, discussing these events. And then I wrote then we had our Anglican unscripted where I laid out the facts and we talked about what we think they meant in our inimical way. Yes, in only now, the way you and I could do it. Now, I've, I've looked at the, uh, the claims that we've made errors of fact in that broadcast and we didn't mm -hmm. because that's what my notes say, that's my recollection, and that's what I wrote in all these other outlets. However, this guy disagrees profoundly with what we think they mean. And that's fine. That's fine. This but is... that's that's a commentary and analysis. Right. You, you agree or you disagree. Sure. But to pretend that you're doing dispassionate professional analysis when you're really doing uh, partisan hackery and calling it uh, high-mindedness, you know, you know, come on, try again. Well, uh, but but we do want you to try again. Uh, here's the thing: if you love our show and you find something we do uh, inaccurate. Write anglicantv at gmail.com and correct us. If you don't like our show and you find something we did uh, incorrect or inaccurate, write anglicantv at gmail.com and, and point it out. Um, if you are told by somebody to find a mistake in the last 184 episodes so that we can really uh, finally put Anglican Unscripted under the water again, that's fine too. We feel sorry for you for ever having to watch more than one episode. But write anglicantv at gmail.com and we will correct any inaccuracies. We're here to be accurate, thoughtful, provide analysis and humor and grow the kingdom. We can only do that with your help. Another thing, if you know we are in inaccurate on something and you don't correct us, um, that's bad. That's sinful. You're here to um, provide correction to your brothers and sisters in Christ. If you're doing that for a political purpose, um, I don't hold you in high regard. You need to be sure that this show is accurate because we're doing this for Christ, not for politics. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm George Conger, and you've been watching episode 184 of Anglican Unscripted.